Hey guys, this is your host, Vinyl Man Jeb of the Jeb and Green Podcast. And we're back here with Tyler Green. Hey, Hello. Tyler. And we have Great a special back. guest I for you guys. Finally have a haircut. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we have a special guest for you, Jason Cropper, originally of Weezer. Hey, Jason. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? Hello. How's it going? Oh, man. The world's pretty crazy, but. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, Jason, my first question for you, we'll start off this cool right from the beginning. When did you start playing guitar? Oh, gosh. Um, I guess I was in my early teens, like 12 or 13, when I first Ooh. picked up a guitar. There you go. So how did you uh, uh, meet Rivers in the band, and how did that all come to, to play, that whole story in the beginning? Sure. Uh, for me, um, it was like maybe, let's see, I graduated high school in 1989, and I was, you know, getting serious about playing in bands. I was living in uh, Northern California, about an hour north of San Francisco at the time. And um, so after a couple years of uh, sort of trying to figure out how to play in bands, I met a, uh, a friend, uh, still friends today, Pat Finn, who's Ooh. kind of one of the Weezer, uh, you know, sort of people. He kind of brought yeah. the whole band together, actually. And, and Pat Finn had introduced... Pat Wilson and Rivers. He met Pat Wilson when he lived in Buffalo and he met Rivers when he worked at, I think at Tower Records on Sunset Boulevard. Oh, cool. And I'm not sure if he introduced Matt Sharp to them as well, but somehow the four of us came together through Pat Finn and, um, and Pat Finn and I, and I wanted to start a band in Los Angeles together. So I moved down there and, and ended up kind of couch tripping in the apartment that Matt and Rivers and Pat all lived in together in LA for a little bit. Oh, wow. And that was May of 1991. Ooh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's uh, almost 30 years ago. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, Tyler. When you're ready, Tyler. So did you, you contribute go. any... Did you contribute any songwriting to the songs that you were involved with on the Blue Album? You know, yeah, they, let they were recorded. Get, yeah, they, they let me get a little bit of uh, songwriting in here and there. You know, Rivers and, and Pat had really formed a strong partnership musically. At that point, they had already had a band together and they were working, you know, diligently together. And so I just kind of supported them. Uh, you know, whether like by paying the bills or being a roommate or whatever. And uh, it just kind of watched their musical relationship continue to blossom. And, uh, and every once in a while I would come up with an idea that Pat or Rivers would incorporate into a song, whether it was a writing idea or a embellishment on a guitar, or like a harmony vocal here or there or whatever. Oh, cool. What were um, some of the songs that you uh, helped yeah. write for the Blue Album? So really, uh, songwriting credit, I only am named on My Name is Jonas, um, which is fine. Uh, there are other little parts here and there where it's, you know, it's just like an acoustic guitar idea that's, you know, it's not a songwriting idea. It's just a, an embellishment or a, you know, a part, if you will, you know. Right, yeah. And you, were, uh, and you of course, played uh, guitar on, the, on Jamie from the DG Rarities. Right. Yes, I, I played on the Blue Album, but I don't think any of my actual performances made the final cut. I think they needed to, uh, you know, take care of Brian and have him playing on some of it. And I think Rivers, you know, wanted to replace most of my ideas just for sake of contractual, you know, cleanliness and whatnot, which was fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah uh, Jamie we did at a college. Keep going, keep going, sorry. No, it's fine. Go ahead. No, no, you can keep going. I'll, I'll ask this question after that. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Uh, Jamie, Jamie set this out. <laughs> for Jamie, we uh, recorded that at a, a college radio station recording studio class. I think St. Mary's or one of those wow. a local LA college. That's a real cool tune. I heard that when I got, we both got into the posies and looking at the DGC rarity stuff. And I was like, ah, Weezer's on here. Interesting. And then I was like, cool to hear that. I love Jamie. It's a great song. Yeah, the Posies, what a really cool band. Yeah, we're really, we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's what kind of started really. our podcast, so it's been really cool. <laughs> yeah. Really good friends of ours. So, so yeah, my next question was, um, do you still keep in, in contact with your bandmates from Weezer? 
Uh, a little bit here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, like when they've come through to play concerts, I'll go see them and maybe go visit oh, cool. the stage or, nice. um, you know, or if Rivers needs something from me for like clearing an old catalog thing that's going to come out, you know, we'll talk. That's or cool. I played a couple shows with him in 2018 in San Francisco. That was fun. Oh, wow. Yeah. What was that like? It was... Um, I don't really have words for it. I mean, I had taken quite a few years off of playing music professionally and, you know, just been kind of a, a working stiff raising my kids and Mm -hmm. all that. And, uh, but it was, it was funny. A friend of mine said, Hey, Rivers is going to play a solo show. Why don't you see if you can get us some tickets? And so I reached out to whoever his handler was at the time. And they said, yeah, why don't you come up on stage and play a couple songs? And I was like, all right. (laughs) <laughs> fun rock and roll so, all right <laughs> yes we did that twice it was really fun and uh he said some really kind things to me uh you know while we were doing that and it was just very encouraging and it it you know kind of helped me to kind of re-kick start my songwriting and recording yeah. and performing stuff that i have been wanting to do all these years but just haven't made time now you got a new album coming out correct yeah i've got about bunch- that yeah, uh, so right, on the heels of playing those shows with him, uh, I wrote like 50 or 60 songs last year, and, and I'm continuing to write, just really enjoying the creative process again, and got a little band together, and um, it's pretty funny, like, I was about to start doing little, like, living room house concerts and, and you know, bigger shows with my band regularly, right when COVID hit, so I had to kind of put that on hold but oh i'm so sorry oh you yeah, know it's tough. Going through it it's fine yeah. you know it's just gotta roll with i think it we'll all make it through we'll be good but it's just it's different a pillow a couple times just to deal with the frustration i understand that <laughs> can you talk about some of the creative process behind your upcoming album sure um so you know being kind of a, a student or in the entourage of rivers i've, I've seen a lot of different you know creative um flow states you know come and go whether it's vipassana or the artist's way or some of those other so i um i, t- I kind of took a cue from from his book and uh, or his books if you will and i started doing the morning pages in the artist's way which is a really great way to sort of blow your nose so you can breathe except with hmm. your you know creative voice if you will yeah and yeah, uh and that and uh, a lot of yoga and um, and really the idea was um, for, for 2019, I just challenged myself to start and or finish writing one song per day. And oh, that's awesome. The goal wasn't to write 365 songs, but just to start that many. And, and I look back at my voice memos towards the end of it and it's like, okay, there's about 50 or 60 songs but wow. about 350 ideas yeah you, know, you can mix them and stuff which is really cool there's never yeah. there's never a limit when it comes to those no nah, that's that's awesome do. yeah so just making that habitual and um and it's nice you know because eventually you get to that point where for, i mean for me anyways where lyrically if i clear my mind regularly and you know just find that peace then whatever it is that really wants to be expressed as a song can come through and I don't have to attach my identity to it or my ego to it. I can just sort of observe it coming out and, and some of them are good. Some of them are, you know, some of the best work I've done. I think, of course I'm probably biased. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Nah, you have a right to be. That's awesome. Never. (laughs) Nah, especially when your own work, especially when you work hard towards it. And I like what you said there with saying that like letting things go of just there. It's great that you talk about, mixing up different ideas and everything because you never know what can come out of you know like like there's one song that you're writing and then there's another you're writing and somehow you find out hey this goes good with this yeah it mixes the two together why not (laughs) so that's awesome i I had a i have a teacher uh a woman named judy stakey who does um songwriting coursework and she would you know she used to do i think she still does retreats or she will be doing in-person retreats in nashville and in California, she's an excellent songwriting coach. And um, 
I can't remember exactly how she said this. It was very wise. It was something about the, the different types of songs and um, that there are, you know, like your typical love song. And then there's your um, kind of like a more of a, uh, an introspective song, you know, it's yeah. like it's a song about the relationship with the other. And then there's a song about oneself. And then there's one other type that's kind of a hybrid and that's, uh, um, you know, like protest songs, Mm -hmm. which are similar to mm -hmm. faith music in a way. It, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Like a protest song today might be a faith based song a thousand years from now. <laughs> we'll quest, yeah. we'll we'll wait for that Bob Dylan to become uh, literature for the Bible, right? <laughs> I never know. Right. Yeah. You never know. Of the prophet. if you. Will. Yeah. Yeah. And it's true though. It does. Cause it's, it's like kind of a documented history. Yeah. So being aware of these different, methodologies or ways to approach mm -hmm. the you know because songwriting is really just a way to communicate right you're communicating something yeah right? it's like poetry too which is which is you could take poems put into song and jim morrison proved that to us with the doors <laughs> <laughs> perfectly with all the spoken word stuff no it's a, it's a crazy crazy especially now too with everything going on where you're kind of stuck in a place where it's like how do, how do i go from here you know but it's good to be able to see what you're doing and keep going yeah uh eat right, exercise a lot, sleep well, minimize exposure to whoever and see how long you can go without getting sick and yeah. sick, be ready to rest. I don't know. I mean, I mean, obviously people have dealt with, you know, epidemics before in True. human history. There's just not really anybody alive in our society who has much personal understanding of what this is going to be like so it's it's new to everybody it's and i think everybody gets to start on the same yeah. foot you know in a sense like when this is over we could all start from like maybe zero or even start again from all the same foot maybe understanding better too which is a positive you could look out of it people maybe understanding oh i can see what you've been through when there wasn't this you know so i, I do like the positives out of it but it is tough it is tough so um, yeah i'm yeah. still slowly but surely getting used to this whole yeah it's tough situation like i said <laughs> with the haircut i had to do yeah. that by myself because I've never shaved my. It looks head good, by man. It looks so good. There you go. Thanks, man. <laughs> it looks good. <laughs> it looks great. But yeah, it's it's scary times. Yeah, you know, definitely. All around. So yeah. I have a question for you. From I was going to ask this earlier, but I could ask for what did you do after Weezer, like post Weezer? You had a couple bands I was reading up on. Sure, like, band wise, um, I had a uh, a band I called Chopper One that ooh. I did with uh, uh, Amy Cropper, my dear ex-wife mother of my three children and uh we put out a record made a couple videos went on the road went to europe oh, you wow. know had like a at one point we had a number one most added track in australia with a song called a punk named josh i think you can still find the video on youtube or i'll look yeah, that we'll, out yeah we'll, we'll link it down below if we, yeah. when we find it yeah perfect yeah. and it was hilarious it was like the chart for the you know like <laughs> those old trade magazines where they tell you where you're charting right in top yeah. 40 or radio ads or some stuff like that and it was it was like 1997 and it was chopper one green day the verve pipe the verve and uh tonic oh wow, wow. On a, in australia yeah. on a most ad it was like wow we got our first number one and that's awesome to the people at the record label at the time who were handling it and they were like, yeah, we just spent all our money signing Dr. Dre's cousin or so, you know, somebody. Well, yeah. And, and, I was, it, and I could see that, you know, the, sort of the writing on the wall, like I was a young dad, I needed a regular income. And so I just kind of shelved it all at that point. I was like, and then a few years later, Napster happened. And I, of course, I was saying like, oh, yeah, of course, don't try, right? And yeah. so I kind of gave up on the whole idea. And, and meanwhile, you know, Weezer continued to, evolve and, and 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 thrive and you know you know they go up they yeah. go down but just continues to stay present and, and still making music too still making yeah, yeah. And, and so i just kind of watched from the sidelines for a number of years after you know as the 90s i made a record with josh freeze that i never released um Ooh. this was in like 2000 maybe 99 2000 we worked together he came to me and was like hey you're, you know, I like your music. Let's, oh, that's that was awesome. fun. yeah, but I wasn't interested in, in touring or getting a deal. I was just, ah, just, like, just making music just to make music, which is amazing too. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's great. You were just doing your own thing and not just yeah. riding on the coattails of Weezer or something, you know? Well, Actually, you know, doing for yourself too, which is amazing, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think music business-wise, one thing I've learned over the years from, you know, you know, as many like trial, failure, trial, failure, trial, success, trial, failure is it's really important to have a good team. You know? Yeah. Yeah, a, yeah. If you don't have good people who want to work on it, who are passionate around you, whether it's in the band or, you know, a, a management company or, or a fan club or, or whatever, you know, whatever it is, whatever, at whatever level you're at, if you can find people who are excited about working with you, then that makes it fun and you can continue onward. If, if you find yourself alone or, or not with the right people, then sometimes it's important to just back up and, and take a break and not worry about the business side of it and just focus. I just had to focus on the art. And I think that my experience with Weezer was, that was confusing because I was such a, a young lad when mm-hmm. that went down. And so, you know, I just had to back up and, and you know what, let it, you know, do what you got to do for yourself. Make sure you're good. You know, you're cause the music exactly. is, you are the musician, you know, it's, it's no matter everybody on the other side, I've learned too. And hearing it from you and a lot of the other people we've had on our podcast in the past is that learning curve of like, you got to do for you. You got to make music for yourself and to realize that it could be for other people, but it is still coming from you, the emotions and, and the stuff. Fail, and it's okay. If you fail, if you fail, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. You know? like Which it's is not amazing. Be the end of the world, but you know, no, someday fact, someone or, might come across like that album that you thought was a failure and they're going to say, yeah, hey, man, I really, it just saved my song. life or thank something like so that. Much. Crazy. You know, it's yeah. like, thank you. You actually reached, I mean, there's the reason why we do this podcast is to reach out to people that maybe aren't in the spotlight, but mean something to us. Like you, Jason, having the fact that I saw your ad and I was like, oh, this guy's really cool. I, I just yeah. sense that good vibe of like, just good like music just, and stuff like that. So like I just want to say, it's crazy. The people I've, the musicians I've reached out to and said, hey, this song yeah. you might not remember from like 20 years ago like, really, really resonated with me, which is like... Your one raw of, recording of that one cover really meant something to me. <laughs> like, that one, like that one Posey's B-side from Yeah, right? That one, that one extra yeah. song. But um, well, Open Every Window is a good example. Yeah. <laughs> which I was just listening to earlier. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a cool album to be able to be on a compilation and all that. And that's where I found Jamie, of course, too. So it's like really cool that oh, yeah, it's like, yeah. wait a second, Weezer was an early nineties band. They weren't later. <laughs> they weren't yeah, did, uh, really after, but did Weezer ever play with the posies or uh I don't know if we if while I was in the band, if there was like a sh- uh mm-hmm. Dave and Company showcase where we played with other DGC bands. Maybe Teenage Fan Club. Ooh, um, yeah, Teenage ooh, Fan Club. Ooh, yes. They're uh, cool. I don't remember, to be honest with you. Probably after I left, they did more ah. of that kind of stuff before they blew up. That's just really cool, though, to be able to like to meet all those bands that now like, because I know Teenage Fan Club is one of our tops, too. One of my favorites of all time. And now I'm wondering how they're going to do when Jerry left the band, how what they're going to do now for their new album. Excited mm-hmm. to hear. But yeah, yeah. Um, when is your new album coming out? excited to i'm gonna i think i'm gonna start putting like singles out one at a time uh right. next month like i'll you know put some yeah, let us know when you put it out we'll shout it out on the podcast page too we'll put it up for you on our page too so you get more attention and hopefully some of the fans from the other shows we had will pop on over and go oh, i want to hear this guy too so Great. Yeah, perfect I've got, um i've got six songs mastered Ooh. and we're working on you know another half dozen now Ooh, wow <laughs> so the heavy we'll workload i love it there you go uh, I'm it's working on some new stuff, a whole story concept album I'm working on with my friends and Tyler's, uh, we're doing some stuff together. So it's yeah. pretty cool. Which I still got to record. So no worries. <laughs> next week. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll uh, we're actually, later. Yeah, no yeah worries. no problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Jason, thank you for, for coming on. Thank you so oh, much. Yeah. Yeah, I do have one more question oh, before you go, Jason. Um, you kind of touched on this briefly, but what, uh, what advice do you have for people who are struggling to be creative during COVID-19? It's a great question. Um, you know, I can only really speak to what works for me in my creative process. I would just say, you know, if you haven't tried that artist's way book, um, let's see, I, I should look up the author's name so we can give a, a proper. Yeah, definitely. Artist's way. And we'll yeah, put a link down in the description below because I think that'll help a lot. That's why we, we inspire on here and other, you know, musicians and podcasters and everything. That, that works for anybody, not just musicians, too. To, to and Julia Cameron is Julia the artist. Yeah, Julia Cameron. I just saw that, too. All right, perfect. And this is 
probably the single most effective creative process unblocking technique I've ever experienced. And um, it takes a little, just a little bit of discipline. I mean, literally what you do is you get up and maybe you go to the bathroom. You don't drink coffee. You don't, you know, you just put on your, your slippers or whatever and you grab mm-hmm. your journal and you just write and you don't, it doesn't matter what you write. You can write okay. what you dreamt about, what you're going to do that day, what you didn't do yesterday, what you're upset about, what you're happy about, what you're grateful for. It doesn't matter. Just let it flow. And what happens is the, the, for me, the, my mind just gets into the place of like allowing for thoughts to just come as opposed to, it's like, you're just observing what Mm. your monkey mind is doing. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that monkey mind will do some really cool stuff. If you just give it space to play and give it freedom. And then the, I think the repetition and the discipline of doing it every day, you know, it start things just start to uncork and that coupled with exercise if you don't find yeah. it, keep going. I, I would just say that that would be the number one inspirational advice I could give to anybody who wants to be creative is try just the first exercise in that book for a month. Yeah. And see. we're going to link that down below. Cause I think that's the biggest thing right now for a lot of, I don't know. I'm going to link it on the face, my Facebook and on our page yeah, because I think that's really to, cool. Shout out yeah. to Julia Cameron. If she's hearing this. Yeah. Yeah. Hope my you're chance, hearing this. Hopefully. We love, we love it. Thanks, <laughs> but thank Julia. you so much, Jason. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, thank you for coming on. It was, really, it was really great really to have you. It. it was, it was a, an honor speaking to you today. Perfect. Honor's mine, gentlemen. Thank you for <laughs> thank having you. me.